Welcome back to my channel. I hope you're well. This is episode one of the globalization revision series over here on my channel. We, so far we've done the tectonic processes and hazard series and we've done the glaciated landscape and chain series. So if you want to watch them go find the playlist over on my channel. They're all there. They're all already up. There's also a bonus video of how to get an A in A-level geography that went up last Thursday and I hope you look I hope you enjoyed it. I'll link it at the end of this playlist in the same way I'll link it on all my other geography playlists. So yeah, I hope this is useful. If it is, and if you know someone who might find this useful, please do share it around. I really do want to help as many people as possible with this topic. And so yeah, we might as well just get straight on into it. Please do subscribe down below. I upload one of these geography revision videos every Monday at 4.30 p.m. British time. Um, so yeah, I'll probably not be finished until this time next year, but that's exciting and that's fun and then it'll be in time for all your exams. So yes, I hope you enjoyed, I hope you learned something and let's just get straight on into this. Understanding globalisation. Globalisation contained. Container ships just keep getting bigger. In July 2013, Maersk took delivery of the world's largest container ship, with 18,000 containers. Maersk claimed that freight could now be transported more cheaply, since the new ship used 20% less fuel per container than carrying 10,000 containers. However, Maersk number one position that didn't last long. In January 2015, China shipping container lines, huge new ship, Globe, arrived from Flexito port in Suffolk from China on its maiden voyage with 19,000 containers. A month later, the Mediterranean shipping company's ship, Oscar, became the largest container ship of all for now with 19,224 containers. These supersized ships were all built in South Korea and they all sailed between ports in Asia and Europe, the world's largest trade route. Huge distances between these ports make size important to keep costs down. In 1990, the average ship contained just 4,000 containers and there were many shipping companies. Now, fewer but much larger companies dominate the global trade. Containerized shipments have shifted the balance of economic power from Europe to Asia. The journey back to China. Almost everything on board the globe was made in China or elsewhere in Asia by European or US owned companies. Relocating or outsourcing production to Asia exploits cheaper Asian labour costs. However, the return journey to China often only carries plastic waste from Europe for recycling or incinerating. So these huge ships bring high value goods to Europe and take back low value waste in return. Amazon primed for takeoff. Many of the products in the, in the globe's containers will probably be ordered by shopping through Amazon. Amazon is a product of the, of the digital age and is an e-tailer, an electronic online retailer. It has reshaped the retail industry. Many people now buy online instead of taking advantage of a physical shop. Quick delivery times allow Amazon to take advantage of, of global connections to reduce the cost of storing large number of items in warehouses for long periods. In 2014, Amazon established a base in Shanghai because its Chinese sales are now rising as China's wealth increases. Amazon uses internet technology to open up and exploit to new markets. It has a media machine selling books, movies and music through its 11 websites across the world. It offers manufacturing companies, sellers, writers and musicians access to a global market for their sales throughout the warehouses. It has grown from being an online bookseller to becoming the world's leading e-tailer with customers in 180 countries. Its prime products offer online TV and films. Its tablets, Kindles, 
give its customers access 24 hours a day anywhere in the world. Operating in most countries, Amazon now works in a world without borders. As a result, national governments find it hard to keep track of its sales in each country in order to calculate the level of business tax that it owes in each location. It's relatively easy for global online companies like Amazon to register their sales in those companies with lower tax rates. The throwaway society. Items purchased through Amazon are cheaper than in shops because of lower operating costs and bulk buying, known as economies of scale. Economies of scale and race to deliver ever cheaper goods called the race to the bottom mean that people in the 21st century just buy and throw away more. Just like the cargo of the return waste on the globe, over 30% of what is purchased will be thrown away within a year. And that doesn't include packaging. People know the price of each item, but its value and what it costs in terms of human rights in sweatshops and environmental impacts using unrecyclable plastic or rare metals are often ignored. The costs are huge. And that is the end of episode one. It was a fairly short one and I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something. As I say, we're going through the whole geography specification. This topic is globalization and then I actually don't know what we're doing next. So leave me in the comments below what topic you'd like me to do next. There's coast, there's regeneration, diverse places, superpowers, uh, all sorts. We can do everything. But yes, I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something. If you did, please hit like and subscribe down below. It really, really helps me out. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed. And I will see you same time, same place next week, Monday, 4.30pm over here on my channel for episode two. Bye guys.